we had a number of requests of, uh, of people asking, well, what does CS really look like? I mean, on the inside. So today I'm just going to give you a little, a little quick guided tour of, yeah, what does CS look, look like on the inside? So first of all, we are just standing here in our brand new uh, studio. It's, uh, it's something we set up so that we can, we can try and, and give you some of, some, some of the insight into what we're doing with rockets. So if we take a little step out of our studio here, we have this very wonderful background here, which is officially our museum. It's a grand collection of, uh, of different rockets and engines and capsules and whatever CES has been doing throughout its entire history. We have a, a good collection of things here and uh, we have a, a very dedicated uh, curator for the museum. So if we take a little uh, step back further here, we are looking at one of our later um, uh, things in CS. This is uh, our autoclave, uh, basically a giant pressure vessel, both with, uh, with heat and vacuum capability too. It's actually uh, decided for uh, composite fiberglass and carbon fiber work. And we're just uh, refurbishing and putting it back into, into action. So it can take quite big things. And one of the really good things is that the diameter on the inside is actually big enough to take a full-sized speaker capsule. So if you take a look inside this very sturdy piece of German engineering, you can get a little insight into what we will be putting inside this autoclave at some point, baking, and then we will have some very light and strong composite uh, constructions afterwards. So if we take a little further look down uh, this hallway, well, first of all, we have here on uh, this side, we have the uh, um, basically a mock-up, a cable tree mock-up for an XO2 at the moment. Our electronics people have to make uh, a full cable tree, cable harness for the entire rocket, but they have to do it before we assemble it. So we need a mock-up to get all the cable links and everything right. So if we just take another look over here, we have our uh, main storage facility over here. It's just a, a big rack uh, shelf system where we put everything, uh, tanks, um, parachutes, uh, uh, equipment for the ships, etc. cetera. We, we also, we just stock it here uh, whenever we don't use it. So if we take a look, further look here in the back, then we get to the point where we see well, um, the home turf of our uh, engine test stand. This is the uh, engine test stand we've been using for all the uh, BPM-5 uh, experiments so far. And what we actually have sitting right down here, being prepared for the next round of uh, engine experiments, is actually the uh, Nexo 2 flight engine. So, looking a little back further here, we have uh, the corner of, uh, of the electronics people and all the electronics usually associated with uh, controlling and operating the engine test stand. Um, in this case, one of our, our old uh, pieces of equipment is the very famous burger terminal. This was the first piece of equipment that, uh, that we used to, uh, to control the engine test stand by, by touch screen. You can see it in several of the videos. But the electronics people decided to upgrade a bit, so now there's a sleek suitcase solution uh, ready to go. So if we take a further look around over this side here, we will be looking into OB1. It's a very important piece of, uh, of machinery housed in a camping trailer, and this is where we do all the mixing and producing of the video streams we send out. Um, so from a live broadcast, uh, the signal goes from the uh, Baltic Sea here back to Copenhagen through this uh, trailer, and then it's sent onto the, uh, to the internet. So looking a bit more before we enter the other hall, there is a bit of, uh, of additional storage space, uh, raw material stock. Um, and we use, uh, we, we have the plate, uh, <coughs> the raw material plate stock here as well. So now we enter the other, the second hole. Um, and now we're getting into the, uh, to the, the smithing, blacksmithing department. 
we have a couple of welding tables here, all our welding machinery, uh, and then again, some raw material stock on the backside. Most of the, let's call it the heavy engineering or heavy construction happens in here. We have a bit of machinery down here on the back, a couple of uh, cold saws, a lot of electrical cabling and wiring, um, especially when we do uh, some, some of the uh, static engine tests, we need uh, quite a bit of cable to come from a, 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 a power outlet all the way down into the test area. So if we take a further step down here through the rest of the hall, um, we right now here, we actually have um, the Nexu 2 rocket in its current state. Now, right now, it looks like a bit like a, a bunch of messed up parts, but this is, again, the modular concept coming into play. We, if you take a close look at it, um, both tanks are missing. And this is simply because the, uh, the tanks are in for painting at the moment. But don't worry, we'll get to the paint shop, so I'll show you in a minute. Um, a lot of basic hand tools and power tools. Um, some of it is, is fairly straightforward whenever we do construction. Um, right here, the white door is the, uh, is the entrance to our machine shop, but we'll get to that in, in just a short moment. I want to show you something else here down near the, uh, near the back. Um, as I mentioned, we have a lot of uh, painting going on right now, and I just wanted you to show you the, uh, the paint tent. Um, it's also a modular construction, which is built basically like a heavy tent which means we can put it up and take it down and place it wherever we want. So if we take a look at it down here, we can already see uh, a, a large portion of the shell plates and outer hull of the uh, Nexu 2 rocket is, I think the paint is already cured, so it, it looks good. And here are the tanks for the Nexu 2 rocket. I'm not sure if they need another coat of paint, but otherwise they, uh, they, they look really good. So. The next step here is that we, uh, once the tanks are done, we'll start assembling the rocket again. And this time, we shouldn't be taking it uh, apart again. We'll put in the last of the internal equipment, and finally, we'll patch everything up with the uh, shell plates uh, on the outside. So if we take a step back out of here again, I want to show you this little thing here. It's a uh, ceramics oven. We, uh, we were kindly donated, and we have been using this uh, several times for the, um, for the silver soldering of our uh, engine, BPM5 engine inner liners. There was some silver soldering with uh, copper spacers, and some of the early experiments were, were done using this oven. So it's in great condition, and we're certainly going to do more uh, silver soldering in this one. But for now, it's a little dormant. Now, if we take a further step through the workshop here, we have a small electronics area. This is a secondary one. It's just used for the electronics we use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis out here with our machinery and, and construction. Uh, another step here, we have a nice, nice and tidy uh, shelf here with a lot of equipment uh, or materials that goes into the, our, um, our composite manufacturing. I mean, that's glass fiber, that's carbon fiber, uh, epoxy, and, and all the other remedies that are needed to, to, to make a really good uh, construction, composite construction. So taking a further step back into the uh, workshop, a little more power tools as usual. But then if we take a look to this side here, we see a lot of space, storage space on top of our machine shop. That's the basic day-to-day -day needs, uh, paper, electronic components, light bulbs, plugs, whatever we need. And then uh, we, it's mostly uh, also for storage and handling of, uh, of a lot of our equipment for our ships and so on. Streaming has a large section up there as well for uh, servers and spare parts. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's quite well packed up there. We won't be going there today. Um, it's shelves mostly, there's not much to see. On the other hand, we'll just take a little step into our, uh, 
into our machine workshop. And this is where some of the finer engineering and construction happens. And there's a bit of stuff going on here as well. Um, this is our well, sort of general meeting area uh, where we often coordinate a lot of our day-to-day -day activities. Um, I just want to show you this uh, paper mosaic we have here. Uh, every little piece of these uh, papers up here, they represent a task on the Nexu 2 project. What, uh, the, the basic thing here is that we use a uh, software bug tracking tool as a, uh, as a project management system. So we can, we can keep track of every little task we have on the Nexo 2 project and, uh, and delegate uh, different tasks to different people. A sort of keeping a track of everything that's going on and making sure that we don't oversee or forget or accidentally miss some of the uh, tasks that we need to get the rocket done. So taking a further look around the shop this way around, uh, the meeting table, a little messy today, but uh, there's a lot of activity going on here. Bolt storage, uh, cutting tools, drills, taps, etc. Um, a drill press, some more uh, grinders and so on. And down here at the first, at the back, we have sort of our heavy machinery when it comes to machining. Uh, we have uh, two lathes and then furthermore, a couple of mills. Now all of this equipment here is uh, manual. We have digital readouts on most of it, but we don't have CNC would be really nice, but we, uh, we, 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 we managed to get by with our, uh, with our, uh, we managed to get by with our manual equipment. Now, one of the latest things and just most recent ones is that we're looking more and more into uh, 3D printing as well. Uh, we just got uh, this first 3D printer up and, and running and several people have already figured out how to use it for uh, electronics boxes for uh, some of the avionics, etc. It has a bunch of different uses and we're just getting started with it. So this is more or less just a very quick tour of what CS looks on the inside and I hope it gave you some of the insight that, that you might have been wanting so far. We'll be going into a lot more details with many of these different pieces later um, but we'll get back to that. So I hope you enjoyed it.